to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Silks for each side have stated their case to the highest court in the land and Chief Justice Robert French has reserved the court's decision. We should know more about it in the next month. But joining us this morning on 2NURFM, Dr David Tomkin, lecturer in constitutional law, among other things, at the University of Newcastle's School of Law. David, hello and welcome and thanks for coming in to try and well, shed a little light on Jeff McCloy's High Court challenge. Well, thanks for inviting me and hello and welcome to all your listeners. David, what is the thrust of this challenge? Well, the first thing to make clear is it's it's not Jeff McCloy on trial here. Essentially, it's the New South Wales Parliament's um, electoral laws that are on trial, in a sense. Uh, Mr McCloy is alleging or arguing that they're unconstitutional. Okay, so saying that basically developers should be able to give money to politicians as they see fit, as other groups are able to make donations. That's, that's one of the things. He's, he's actually challenging three things about the electoral laws. One of them is there's a ban on donations, political donations by developers. The second is that there's a cap on the amount that anyone can give. Um, essentially, I think it's $5,000 to a politician, to a politician um, and $2,000 in other cases. And then the third thing is a ban on indirect so non-cash donations. So, for example, donating office space to a political candidate uh, free of charge or below market rent. So he's challenging all three of those kind of limitations on donations. And um, what, what, uh, what are the government lawyers saying, what are the silks saying for the government arguing against that case, you know, saying, well, this is why the legislation was put in place, this is why we need it? What are their main arguments? Well, well, the first thing to understand is the constitutional basis on which he's making the challenge, and that is the implied freedom of political communication. Uh So in 1992, um, the High Court said that there was an implied freedom of political communication under the Constitution, even though there's not an express in in words saying you have a right to do this. They said it's it's there anyway. Um, And so... That's what it's all about. Uh, in order to, to succeed at that, you need to argue three things. One is that the law burdens political communication. The second is that um, whether it serves a legitimate end. And then the third is whether the means used to, to achieve that end are proportionate. So they're the three things that are before the High Court. And um, I can go into a little bit of detail on each of those, what Mr McCloy's arguing and what the government's arguing, if, if you're interested. Yeah, I am. Solicitor General for Western Australia, Grant Donaldson, said that that was really bunkum, the idea that developers don't have access to politicians. He actually said to the High Court yesterday, they can simply pick up the phone and talk to them. So that's the thrust of their argument, isn't it? That this whole idea that somehow developers are impeded in their communication with legislators is really not the case. Talk me through some of these points a little more, David. What what do you really see uh, coming out of this, if you like? I know you can't preempt the High Court's decision, but, but what do you think has happened? Uh, well, immediately before, prior to this case, um, there was a case in Unions New South Wales where some of the provisions under this same Act were found by the High Court to be unconstitutional. And so there's a question about whether these ones as well will be. Um, now, in terms of what the point you raised about developers having access to politicians. That's one of the main issues in this case, in that, is there a burdening of political communication? And the government's argument is no, he can still pick up the phone and talk to politicians. Uh, Mr McCloy is arguing that essentially donations buy access, whether we like it or not, whether you think that's good or not, if you make a donation, you're more likely to have access to a politician. And he's saying that... um, he should have that right just as anyone else does. Why single out developers? I remember when Barry O'Farrell was, in fact, enacting this legislation and he was saying, you know, developers, just because they've got deep pockets, they can't have access to politicians because they've got more money than someone else. This is the reverse argument of that. It's, well, just because I've got money, Mm. why shouldn't I have equal access and why shouldn't I be able to give my money to whom I choose? Uh, I, I did read, and I thought this was particularly interesting, and I'm interested in your thoughts, Uh, Jeff McCloy's uh, QC on this said uh, a system whereby all political donations uh, were better disclosed is needed and he said (coughs) 
However, he did concede that if one uh, is giving money in a brown paper bag in secret, current laws or even revised ones won't make a great deal of difference. Now, this kind of goes to the nub of the argument, doesn't it? It's all good and well to have legislation, but if people are brown bagging it and doing the wrong thing, then you can revise the laws from, you know, hilltop to high valley and it won't make any difference. Well, exactly, exactly. So um, where are we now? When are we likely to see a decision? Um, that's, <laughs> I can't really say for sure, uh, probably within the next two months at a guess. Um, obviously this is a very significant case, not just for Mr. McCloy, but for all of us in terms of not just the ban on developers giving donations, but caps on donations generally, uh, and also in constitutional law in, in just clarifying just what this implied freedom means, uh, in other cases as well. So I think the court will take its time to, to craft its reasons for judgment very carefully, so I, I'd probably say two months away. Now, it also impacts on the union movement, I should imagine, as well, because they, in fact, donate large swathes of money, uh, usually to the Labor Party. Um, so that's would that also open up that uh, as, as a case in point? Yes. Essentially, anyone who wants to give more than $5,000, a political donation of that size, um, is going to be, potentially be affected by the outcome of this case. Do you think we'll see moves for a change in the constitution? Is that likely? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. No. Um, that's that's just uh, far too long of a bow to draw on it, isn't it? Well, Do given how, how difficult it is to amend the constitution requiring yes. a referendum. Yes, indeed. David, look, I, I think we're going to see really big changes uh, no matter what the court's decision in some way, because it's got a lot of people considering political donations. And, and Jeff McCloy really has stirred things up here. He's taken it to the High Court, as he said he would. Will you, can I reserve some time for you when the judgment is brought down to come in and perhaps again talk about it? Sure. It'll be much easier to talk about it then once the court's actually made its decision. Yeah, when you know what's going on rather than hypothesising. But thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Dr David Tompkins, a lecturer in law at the University of Newcastle. And again, when the High Court does bring down its decision, we will do our best to distill that information for you. 2NURFM.